I'm gonna tell you guys something. Are there any of you that had a four stroke out there? Well, I just wanna say, I'm sorry. But I also want you to know that Jesus still loves you. Hey guys, welcome back over to the channel. Today we have a fun little build today. I just picked up a Yamaha Zuma. Um, I'm gonna show you guys here in a minute, but we got a bunch of parts laid out on the desk I wanna show you. Pretty uh, stock right now. Basically everything on it is stock, but after we're done with it, this thing should be ripping. I'm gonna throw a new tube in there right now because I ended up popping the last one. I got a pretty bumpy driveway. But yeah, we're gonna do a before comparison, so I'm gonna throw that new tube in, and then we're gonna take you guys on a quick little drive and see how fast this thing gets up and going stock. And then we're gonna put all the new parts on it and see how it performs after. So here are all the parts I got for the bike. I ended up getting the Yasuni expansion chamber along with a muffler. I got a 70 big bore kit. It comes with the cylinder, the piston, the rings, gasket, um, the head, cylinder head. I ended up getting a jet kit because when you do throw a new cylinder on with a bigger piston, your bike is gonna run lean with the stock jetting. So we gotta richen this jetting out, fatten it up a little bit. Got a new belt, Cannot, can't go wrong there. I also got a new variator along with a contra spring. Um, when you guys do scooter tuning, there's a bunch of stuff that goes into it. I'm going to show you a couple tricks to make sure you guys can get this dialed if you're doing uh, scooter tuning to your bike. But yeah, here are the new tubes I got. But that is basically it. We're going to see how this thing performs with all these new parts. Let's go. One quick thing I wanted to say before we get started with today's video, I want to say a huge shout out to Scooter Tuning CA. Eric over at Customer Service helped me pick some of these parts because there's a lot to scooter tuning that I didn't know about. I didn't know it was so technical, but uh, yeah, huge shout out to him. If you guys want anything for your moped or scooter, you guys can hit the first link down in the description. Their website is set up perfect. Um, it's a lot better than uh, other websites I've seen. That's why I went with them, but they're a super good company and the customer service is great. So appreciate you guys over there, but let's get to it. So here's how the bike sounds now. It's pretty quiet. It's pretty choked off um, stock. Here, I'll give it a rev a little bit. So there's not much to it, but um, yeah, that's what it sounds like now. We're gonna take this thing for a rip. Let's go. All right, full throttle. So the bike did about 35 miles an hour, kind of going downhill against the wind, or with the wind, I should say, but this bike will do like 45, 50 if you're really cooking down a hill and you know, you're ducking and all that. But, um, so yeah, that's where kind of where we're sitting at now. But first things first, we're gonna tear this entire thing apart to get to the cylinder and the piston. So let's go. So you guys know we're gonna be doing a merch drop here. So um, any order within the next five or so days, We'll be getting a pack of stickers. Scooter Tuning sent us a ton of stickers. Um, so yeah, any order in the next five days while supplies last, we'll be getting a uh, sticker kit. And we are going to be also giving away this piston. So if you guys order a t-shirt, you might be getting a piston with it, a blown up one. It's pretty cool, right?
right guys, so we got the cylinder off, the piston out. Um, it was pretty simple, just a little plastic cover and it's just a couple bolts and it pops right off. You don't have to deal with any of that water, nothing like that. It's a lot different from dirt bikes. It's just real easy, real fast. So don't be scared to do it yourself, but I'm gonna show you guys what this piston and cylinder looked like. So here is the old piston, not too bad. Um, there's a little bit of blow by right there. That's probably what was uh, causing the low compression when it would get hot. It would just like not want to go and take off right. Um, it would, but you know, it's just a little slow. But anyways, the cylinder looks pretty good inside. Not too shabby. I'll probably end up selling this thing on eBay. So if you guys want a stock cylinder, I'm going to freshen this thing up, get it on eBay. As you can tell, it's quite a bit of a difference here. I'm just going to put the old piston in the 70 big bore kit. So you got a lot of slop in there. This thing should really go after put the new piston in. But actually, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a new jet kit in there you're gonna to want to put a new main jet in there a bigger one because you don't want to lean it out leaning means that you're not going to have enough fuel for the cylinder it might run right but you're gonna end up frying this thing when it gets super hot and uh, that will be no good so we're gonna go up about 10% they say and I don't know what's in their stock but I did some research and they said to use an 86 this is a six millimeter jet so we're gonna slap this in there it comes with a bunch of different jets but we're gonna end up using the 86 so that should work just perfect but anyways um, yeah we're, I think we're gonna slap that jet kit on there and then put the new cylinder on let's go yeah I think the car will be a lot easier to reach without the cylinder in the way um, as you can see that's where the cylinder goes and then that carb is right there so I think it'll be a lot easier to change that main jet when none of the stuff is in the way so okay so here we got the carburetor bowl off just, there's two little screws right here on each side of the carburetor and you just take that bowl off and then you'll be able to see your main jet which is right there and we're going to replace it with this 86 jet it's a six millimeter keep that in mind you need a six millimeter does look a little bit different but that's going to be okay um, but yeah we're just going to pop this in and then put the foot bowl back on Another thing too, you do not need to disconnect the gas line. I disconnected that first, I didn't know. But uh, yeah, you don't need to disconnect the gas line. No fuel is gonna pour out of the bowl forever, so. And so the kit they sent me also came with reeds. These are your reeds here. Um, these are intake reeds. So they go before the, after the carburetor, you're gonna see a boot that attaches to the carburetor. And then that after that boot, it goes into the cylinder so we're gonna put these reeds in there right now wow so i found out it's a lot easier to get at all this i probably should have done this before i started filming but i ended up taking the seat off along with that compartment there it's just four bolts there's one right there one right there and then one on that crossbar member so so this will allow us to get to those reeds this is what i'm talking about here so there's four allens right there and then we're gonna pop this boot off and we should be able to get to the reeds. So here is your reed block. This is what it looks like here. Yeah, so basically we are going to replace these little reeds right here. These are actually metal, so I don't know if I should replace them or I'm going to. There's no sunlight coming through, so that's a good sign. And they are metal, they don't chip never seen that it's actually kind of a good design actually you know what I think I'm gonna leave these because I like the fact that they're metal don't have to worry about them they're pretty much the exact same thickness as these ones here um, and these tend to chip sometimes so actually yeah I'm just gonna leave these metal and call it a day plug this back in but I'm glad I know and have that peace of mind so another good check you can do while you're in here is make sure that your crank rod has zero play. So we're gonna grab our rod here. We're gonna go up and down. There's gonna be no play there. And then we're gonna go side to side. There can be a little bit of side to side, but no up and down play. That's a no go. So yeah, I think we're, we're our crank is really good, really solid, so. So there is one thing we have to do before we slide this cylinder on and it's chamfer the edges, the ports. Um, when you get a brand new cylinder, um, a lot of these edges right here will be super sharp and inside here too. 
so they're gonna be super sharp and in order to make this piston and cylinder last the longest I mean this was this is a 2009 so it's that many years old and it has like 10,000 miles so that's a lot of miles but these things last for a long time and will last even longer if you chamfer these edges in here uh, make sure that piston doesn't catch on anything so I'm just gonna take a razor blade and scrape away at those edges and then uh, I think we'll be ready to slap this cylinder on so our cylinder is all ready to go I found out you can also use like a handheld file to uh, get those edges knocked down in there but before we insert this into the bike we are going to kind of lube it up with some two-stroke oil make it easier so I'm just gonna kind of lube up the cylinder there you're gonna wipe it out with contact cleaner and make sure it is completely clean before you do this step more lube the better honestly you're definitely gonna want to use a gasket I almost forgot make sure your gasket surface is super clean and wiped off you don't want this thing leaking anything now I honestly kind of forgot about our piston it's pretty pretty important here we're gonna grab our clip we're gonna insert it into the groove there let's see how do I do this might help to grab a pick at this point and you can kind of just pick it into the groove there we go there's one and we're gonna lube up our wrist pin just slide it in okay we're ready to go now we're gonna put this on our connecting rod you want to have the arrow facing the exhaust side so that is down just like that now we're going to put in our clip on the other side so i have this handy tool here it's just a ring spreader but we're going to stuff it in there put a ring on here and then all this does is expand the ring a little bit make sure that the gap hits those pins inside the piston. You'll see little pins there. Okay, we're all set to throw our cylinder on. Make sure it's lubed up. Okay, slide this on. Now we have our cylinder head. There's a little gasket that goes in here. Probably won't hurt to lube that up a little bit. Now we're gonna move on to the CVT. This is considered where the CVT is. This is one of the pulleys, and then this is your clutch side right here. Kind of the steps on doing this. So first we're gonna remove our kickstart. We're gonna use an Allen for the rest of these. There we go. This is a 17 mil. We're just gonna remove this. Get this off the spline there. This is our belt. So here in the package we have our Contra spring they call it. And this goes behind the clutch here. Um, you're gonna wanna upgrade this um, if you're doing any tuning like, so for the big bore kit, they usually do clutch springs. I'm not gonna do those. We're gonna see how it works first and then maybe down the road we'll do that. But you wanna get a definitely a stiffer spring right here. You wanna get new rollers. A lot of times they can be different weights and this is what allows um, your pulley to grab your belt and then your plate there and then a new pin too so that's all great so this is kind of like a puzzle piece so you put your new rollers in the grooves like that okay so you have our rollers in there and then we have our plate with our little plastic pieces and you'll see how it kind of goes on but it kind of just interlocks like so press that thing down there so yeah very simple once you have your rollers in there um, you're just going to slide it on like this making sure that all the splines line up just like so you are want to install your little pin here just like that so now we're going to take our clutch off This spring in here is what we're going to replace. 
Well, you gotta get a little creative with these. So here's the new one, this is the high performance one. Basically what you wanna do is, this spring goes on here, and then it's compressed super tight. And basically, uh, you loosen this nut on top while you hold your feet on it, I'll kinda show you. But basically, um, what I did is I put this in the vise, and left this part on top, and then I just took a big crescent wrench and then uh, loosened that nut. So. We're just going to put this new spring on. This can just set, be set to the side. And then here goes the new one. Okay. Now we're just going to tighten this guy up. Okay, so we got that torqued down. So before we install our clutch, you want to make sure that you sand these pads here. They're pretty glossed over, so you want to make sure you sand those. And then basically what we're going to do to install this belt, this belt is directional, and the arrows are going to want to face the front of the bike like that. I had trouble with this. I didn't really understand what was going on, but now I do. Basically, you can squeeze this and rotate it at the same time, and it'll open these two plates, and then you'll be able to slide your belt on. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open this these two plates and slide our belt in there. So it goes like this and then we can open our two plates and sandwich our belt in there the best that we can. And that is pretty good right there. I'd say that is, you can kind of, that is just enough. And then we're going to slide this over like that. And then we're going to hook it around by our variator. And then you can slide this on. You wanna make sure this is all clean. You can probably wipe that out. I should probably wipe that out. Okay, so I got that all cleaned out. And now you can just slide this right on over and then replace it with your nut there. Now that our belt is on and we're making sure that it's going in the right direction and we can now put our other face on right there. And then you're gonna go this castle washer deal. Kickstarter, I believe. And now all that's left to do is put your cover back on. You can replace this gasket too. This one's a little torn up. So the first thing they want you to do in installing this Yasuni pipe is install these bolts right here. I don't know if you could see in here, but when these pipes come from the factory, they have this little restrictor in there. So we're gonna end up taking that out with a flat blade screwdriver. I'm just gonna see if we can't pop it out. We got one weld broken loose. Oh, there we go, we got it. That's all it is. And now, let's kind of snake this through. Let's see how this fits. It's supposed to go like that. So to attach the pipe on just like that, this is what they want you to do. They want you to take a bolt, a washer, and then put a grommet on. And they want you to put this sleeve inside the grommet, just like that. And then another grommet, like that. A washer, and then the nut. So basically all of this goes into this big old fitting right there. And then down by the exhaust manifold, they provide a gasket right here, so that's nice. But then you have to use your own old hardware. So we're gonna put that on right now. Okay, so this is what the pipe looks like all installed. I found out it was a lot easier to start with the exhaust manifold, have this completely detached, kind of laying on my back, holding this with my leg. Then it kind of worked out, but looks good. So we are going to pop the muffler on. Just super plain and simple, but basically you're gonna wanna take these locking nuts off. They provide these for you. Then I think what they want you to do is slide it on just like that. Put these back on. Basically you just go around here. And then you can suck it down. Just like that. Done. Well guys, I got some bad news. Ended up frying this thing up. Basically, I uh, welded the piston to the cylinder, so it's no bueno. But uh, we got a new kit ordered up for it, and the reason why that happened was because I didn't pre-mix the oil and delete the oil pump. So make sure you guys are doing that when um, you guys do this to your scooter. So the next video, I'm going to show you how to delete the oil pump. And just going to do a bunch of cosmetic changes to the scooter. 
if it runs good throughout this week and then uh, we can hammer that but anyways just want to get this thing up and going yeah that's pretty much it next video like i said i'm going to show you a couple little tricks you can do with a variator make sure you're maximizing uh your pulley system your gear ratio um other than that i think yeah next video we're just gonna do a bunch of cosmetic stuff to it get this thing looking sharp but uh it definitely needs a wash that's for sure so i apologize for the dirty bike but so i want to hear what you guys think about cosmetic changes to this thing i know that eventually i want to delete those bars up there and put like regular dirt bike bars you can do that and make like mounts and stuff and you just get like a little trail tech uh tack and stuff and i also want to do the jdm delete kit basically those blinkers go up there and it kind of just removes all of this I'm gonna get some Cerakote trim coat to kind of blacken that out a little bit. I got the highway bars, I call them the ball coolers. But yeah, I think this thing will be looking pretty fresh. Maybe a bigger rack. Take those mirrors off somehow and kind of just like maybe place them on the end of the bars or something. Kind of streamline this thing. But yeah, I wanna hear what you guys think we should do to this thing down in the comments below. Yep, so that's gonna wrap it up here. Sorry I didn't get a full run, but I did have this thing doing about 60. Um, next video you're gonna see this thing actually on the road driving I hope so anyways if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you comment like and subscribe we'll talk to you guys later peace out